God snatched you from the hands of the devil and said, get it together. I'm talking about Jesus is in this house and we should be hungry for the Lord Almighty because he's the only one that can make miracles happen. The only one that can deliver and set people free in the name of Jesus. Uh, speaking about setting people free, is Renee in the house? Where's Renee? Renee, stand up real quick, Renee. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. That's Renee. You know Renee. Everybody knows Renee. You can have a seat. Renee, uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, right, Renee? Just yesterday, she was in in in, in some shackles and and uh, in the in the outfit of of the orange uniform of the Bear County Jail. Um, uh, things caught up to her, and it just so happens that I'm talking about revival because we witnessed revival. Miss Irene was part of that. Uh, a revival on, on Saturday when people were just getting slain in the spirit and Miss Pastora Janie as well and we did a massive altar call as well on Saturday. Great things were, were happening. And then Sunday as well, Wednesday as well. But uh, Renee was in, in, in chains or uh, handcuffs or whatever and um, this gentleman that I call Hollywood but everybody knows him as Rudy Obregón. Can you please stand Rudy Obregón? That's Rudy right there. Thank you, Rudy. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. You may have a seat. Rudy happened to go to court for another reason for someone else, uh, for moral support. But Rudy happened to walk into the wrong courthouse. And when he walked into the wrong courthouse, he saw Renee ready to be taken into custody. Rudy just looked at her like, where you been? And her face lit up because she saw somebody she knew from church. Realizing he was in the wrong court, he went to the other court. While he was in the other court, the Lord led him to say, go back to the other court where you were at with Renee. She, make a long story short, Rudy went back to the other court where Renee was ready to be sentenced to, I believe, two years. And it just so happens that Rudy said, can I say something? And the judge like, who are you? And he says, well, I'm Rudy Obregón. My pastor calls me Hollywood. No, he didn't say, he didn't say that. But he said, I'm, I'm Rudy Obregón and I go, to, I go to Last Chance Ministries. And the judge is like, okay, well, what happened? I want to say something in behalf of you. Allow me. And they allowed Rudy to speak. And Rudy spoke and said, this girl, Renee, I know her. I know who she is. They go, well, we're going to give her the time already is set and she's been whatever. Rudy said, but she's a good person. She comes to church. She might have made mistakes, but I see that she's hungry and she's thirsty and she's always there. I don't know what's, what can happen. To make a long story short, the judge said, I don't know who you are, but I was about to sentence her. But because of what you just said, I'm going to let her go. You will see her tonight at your church. And Renee is free in the name of Jesus. She was going to be taken away. But by the grace of God, I'm talking about revival. Setting the captives free is what I'm talking about here tonight. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait to share that testimony with you. Because Rudy wasn't in the wrong courthouse. He was at the right courthouse. I'm here to tell you, there's some people that are guilty, guilty, guilty in this house because of what you've done. But God just stepped in into this courthouse. You're at the right place at the right time. My God's about to set you free. He's about to loosen some chains that need to be loosened. The doors of the prison are about to open in the name of Jesus. You're about to enter something new, a new dimension. I'm here to tell you, God is on the move. Come on, somebody praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Woo. God is so good, man. Renee, I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're, you're always here. And I, I'm so glad you're here. My wife was just asking me about you. And I go, you haven't heard? She said, no, because I hadn't told her yet. And I just told her right out the door what happened with you. And uh, so continue to stay strong. Someone needs to get a hold of Renee and continue to pour into her. And uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, so, Rudy, thank you for, uh, I'm so glad you're part of the Hollywood. Not everybody can go in there. But I'm so glad you are who you are. 
but thank you for being obedient to the voice of God, Rudy, for going back in the name of Jesus. And not only that, but no matter what people say about you or what you've been through or where you came from, God used you as a vessel, Rudy, to go and set somebody free in the name of Jesus. So praise God that he will use the foolish things of the world, that he will use the weakest things of the world to go out there and be the vessel to stand. God's looking for people, like I told you before, some Johns and some Peters. I don't might not have gold and silver, but what I do have is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What good can come out of Nazareth? There you go. There you go. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. If you've been with us throughout the week, you know exactly what God is doing. It all makes sense. It's not just miracles or just um, breakthroughs or revivals in the church. I'm talking about in the Bear County as well, setting people free. How many other people are out there that uh, need someone like, like a Rudy or someone like a voice? And those of you that are that are... Uh, men and women of God, that you gave your life to Jesus. Our job, Isaiah 61, is to go and set the captives free. Our job is, is that the anointing upon us, the, the, the overflow that's upon us, it's not for us to boast. It's for us to release that power inside of us into someone else that is weak and has no voice. And this is where the revival takes place. So when I heard that, I said, that's what people don't get. They think, okay, we're going to see a massive revival. Yeah, we're going to see that too, but it's, it's little things like this that God said, man, I get the honor. I get all the glory because it had nothing to do with Rudy, had nothing to do with Renee. It had everything to do with the Lord Almighty. God can change the words that come out of the attorney's mouth, out of the judge's mouth. You can go in there defeated thinking you're going to just, it's over. And God said, man, go in there with boldness. Go in there with me on your side and watch me turn things around in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when I talk about my daughter in the hospital, when I talk about anything that is going on, we know that we go in there with confidence that it's not us, but it's the Lord in us. And we don't know, we don't realize how much power and authority we have. Because if we say greater is he, I always say that, that it's in us. That means Christ lives in us. We got the power to stand in the name of Jesus. With that being said, talking about stand, I want to talk to you about something that we need to experience this revival. And I'm not going to talk about the whole thing, but there's one verse I want you to look at. And it's in the book of Ephesians. Everybody knows this. Ephesians chapter 6. Join me in Ephesians chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 10. And through 15. And I'll, I'll let you know what, what's going to happen here in a little bit. Ephesians chapter 6 is way in the back after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. After the book of Acts, go all the way after Romans, before Timothy. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 15. When you're there, please stand for the word of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 15. When you're there, say amen. All right, here we go. It's on the screen if you don't have your Bibles. The word of God reads, finally, let God speak to you. Finally. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our strategies, our struggles, it's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Verse 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Verse 15, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me. Open up the ears of every single person that is in this house. We ask for these things in Jesus' name and we all say amen and amen. You may have a seat. Hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, 
It's time to stand. Firm. That's it. That's it. Look at your other neighbor and say, it's time for you to stand. Firm. And <laughs> somebody stood over there. Stand. Firm. Not all wobbly. Firm. All right. I'm going to read something and then I'm going to, and then I'll go into my word. And here, um, in the Bible that I have, it's called the law of intuition. And the law of intuition is, Paul understood how to defeat the enemy. And we want you to be prepared to know how to defeat the enemy yourself. Like any good leader, Paul uses a warning at the end of his letter about the tough times his people will face. They're up against Satan himself. An enemy who will do everything to stop your progress. Instead of moping about the situation, however, Paul lays out a specific plan for his Ephesians friends. Listen, you got to lay out the plan. Everything I'm saying, you can take notes. He's laying out a specific plan. They are not to approach this fight in their own strength. Okay? But remember that only God can defeat the enemy only God can defeat the enemy. As a warrior, God fills a role his people desperately need. He serves as, if you're taking notes, this is what God serves as. He serves as the protector, the defender. Hey, Renee, you experienced that just yesterday. Protector, he protected you. The defender, he defended you. The deliverer, he delivered you. Woo, hallelujah. The provider, he provided Rudy to go in there with you and guide hallelujah he guided his steps to go where you're at god gives his army every supply that is needed to win the battle paul then instructs his leaders to put on the whole armor of god in order to stand and prevail serving as an officer under god paul issues the order for the troops you are the troops when leaders practice the law of intuition they provide their people with a strategy is number one not only just a strategy, but a strategy to win. Provides knowledge of the opposition. Knowledge, you need to know. Not only does he provide knowledge and, and strategy, but he, re, he provides the resources that is needed as well. And only, not only the resource, but a plan for how to use the resources. You need a plan. How am I going to use these resources? And then the last thing is detailed communication. And he, he's going to communicate right now to each and every one of you. If you listen to the preparation, if you come in here expected to hear a word from the Lord, that means you expect your pastor to prepare a message. But my question to you is, are you prepared to hear this message? Because I can come prepared all day long, but if you're not prepared to not only just listen to the word of God, but to do what the Word of God says to do. And I wish I had a little cotton ball for a lot of people that are in this house. So the cotton ball, you can put it in one ear because sometimes there's some people in this house that they hear it over and over and over and it goes in one ear, it comes out the other ear. But we need people to put a cotton ball, put your finger there or whatever, so whatever you hear tonight, it stays and it sticks and you can win this battle finally in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So what I want to concentrate today on is not the whole armor of God. We all know the helmet and the belt and stuff. What I want to concentrate is the shoes. I want to concentrate on verse 15. So if you still have your book open, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. I want to concentrate on just that one verse 15. That this having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace is what it says. Preparation is a word uh, meaning a prepared foundation. That's what preparation means. It's a, it's a word that means a prepared foundation. You just saw, saw how God gave us the, the, the strategies, the plan, and what he's going to do. So it's a prepared foundation. It's already prepared. You, 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 you can't lose if you follow these, these rules, these, this strategy of the Lord. So it's a prepared foundation foundation. Uh, the rest of the body 
the rest of the whole body of armor is, is good. But you can have the helmet, you can have the breastplate, but if your feet are wounded, you are an easy prey to the enemy. If your feet are wounded, you are an easy prey to the enemy. So we're talking about preparation, we're talking about revival. You can't experience revival on your back or on your face or on your side because you have fallen. The only way you can experience revival if you're still standing in the name of Jesus. So it's very, very important that you understand the verse of 15 that the shoes of readiness, the peace, the, 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 the shoes of a peace of the gospel. You have to know what you're wearing and what you have. Back in Paul's day, they didn't have like landmines and bombs and all that other stuff. Back in Paul's days, they would get some sticks and they would sharpen the edges and make big old spikes out of it. And then they will put them under the ground and they will camouflage it and they will put all kinds of grass and different things on the ground. So what they wanted to do is if the soldiers walking towards the camp, that the soldiers will step on the spikes and it will destroy their feet. And all of a sudden they fall to the ground and then they can't walk anymore. So they can have the whole armor, but if their feet are no good, if they can't stand, they can't fight. I want you to tell your neighbor that if you can't stand, you can't fight. Isn't that, there's a saying, if you, if you don't stand for something, you stand for anything. How does that go? You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. So they will go and they will put these things under the ground so those spikes will come and it will, it will just mess up their, their feet. And advancing soldiers, because that's something that I believe the Lord is calling some people to advance here in 2024 to be advancing soldiers, not just soldiers, but advancing soldiers. They needed to have sturdy, sturdy boots to, to actually walk anywhere God called them to walk to. Boots to, uh, to stop the spikes from penetrating their feet. So you can imagine these boots had spikes on the bottom with thick, thick soles. So when they stepped on something, have you ever been somewhere like to the ranch? or I, I'm talking about myself, and something goes in your tenny and it goes in your foot and you have to take your shoe off and it hurts and uh, anyone experience that? And, and, and this, this is, can you imagine spikes going into your, into your feet and then you're down and you're out and penetrates a soldier, you and I, somebody say you and I, amen, could be outfitted in the most invisible armor from head to toe, from his ankles, but it would do no good if he couldn't walk. And that's what the enemy wants. He doesn't want you to continue to walk, man. I keep on calling the days, 46 days, 45 days, 42 days before the year is over to encourage you that you're almost there. Felicia just said, you're almost there. You, you, can, you can make it. But it's sad that not everyone is going to make it strong in the name of Jesus. As a matter of fact, a lot of people will fall, will fail, will not continue to stand for the truth. God is looking for people that will stand in the name of Jesus, that will stand in the midst of trials and tribulations, that will stand no matter if you have a daughter or a son in the hospital or incarcerated, that you will stand when your lights get turned off, when you will stand when it doesn't look good, when you stand when you don't have no money, when you stand when all hell's breaking loose, God is looking for people that will stand. Even when tears are rolling down your face, you're still standing in the name of Jesus. And we are in 2023, almost to the end of the year. I know you've been through some things, but you should be proud of yourself that you're still here. You're still standing. You still got time to get stronger and stronger in the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, the thing is, is when you get your feet injured, it's kind of hard to, to even stand more, more or less than, more than, than to continue to march and, and fight because we can't just stand. We got to keep on marching and keep on fighting the good fight of faith. So Roman soldiers, they wore these shoes that had a small, like small nails. I was looking at the picture. There's like, like if you're wearing cleats, like that, like small nails in the bottom to give them a firm footing in combat. That's a word right there. Firm footing 
in combat. You need to be like firm. You can't be just standing. Uh, I used to box many, many years ago. And they would tell you how to stand because one punch, you can be uh, unbalanced and you, and you can lose your balance and you will fall. But if you learn how to stand, if you know your stance, and, and the, when the devil sees that individual and says, okay, that person can stand. Like you get hit so hard and you're still standing. It, the, the devil gets kind of scared of you. Be like, man, he's still standing. And, and here is the gospel of peace. If you don't know what the gospel of peace is, because Paul emphasizes standing firm against the attacks of the enemy. So you got to stand firm against the attacks of the enemy. And the gospel of peace is our firm footing in the battle against Satan. I'm going to keep on reading here. When Satan attacks with a flaming missile, right? Can you imagine? Because it says every firing dart, when you have your shield, it bounces right off, right? So we're talking about the shoes. So when the enemy attacks with a flaming missile of doubt, if there's anyone here that you see some things and you start doubting, you start fearing, and, and, and such as if, if God really loved you, he wouldn't have let this happen. When you start hearing things like if God really loved you, then this shouldn't have been happening to you. If you, if you stand firm and you have those shoes of readiness, if, if God really loved you, you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. This is where we dig our peace shoes into the turf of God's word in the name of Jesus. Amen. And actually reply is how you reply. If you want to take the scripture down, it's in Romans 8 verse 28. How you reply is like this. It is written. You see, when the firing dart comes of the missile of doubt, you got to stand firm on the word. Amen. You got to be ready on the word. If you don't know the word, you won't be able to stand. But if you know the word, the word is strong, sharper than any edge to sword. And if you stand firm on the word, then you can reply to the devil and say, it is written that all things work together for the good to them who love God and who are called according to his purpose. See, when you stand on that word, you can say, man, it is written all things work together for the good to those who love him. It's like me when I lost my daughter. Okay, whatever I can, I can, I can dwell on that and I can get real shaky and fall or I can stand firm and say, you know what, devil? Everything that is written, all things work together for the good to them who love God. I can respond like that or I can respond by saying, where are you, God? Why did this happen? But because I know who I am and I have my feet and they're ready for battle, I cannot fight on my own in the flesh, but I can fight with the word of God and say and tell the devil that, listen, you might mean it for bad, but my God is going to turn it around for the good in the name of Jesus. So if there's anyone here that you got thrown all these arrows against you and look at your marriage and look at your children and look at this, you got to stand firm and say, okay, I'm not looking to the left or to the right. It is written that whatever is meant for evil God's going to turn it around for good and he's going to get all the honor and all the glory but if you don't know the word you will fall, you will go down you got to know the word and then, when, and, then, and then you stand and then when Satan comes and he stabs you from behind with, with, with remember this remember what you did yesterday remember what you did last night this is when we dig even more deeply and reply like this. And you can write this scripture down. 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. So when he stabs you in the back, he says, man, look at what you did. You reply with this. Amen. This is good. It is written. Everything is written. That if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son to die for you and I. We are worth more than anything. The devil can say what he wants to say. But if we know the word, the word is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you know that the word is for us and not against us, we will not easily be moved. We will stand our ground. I'm talking about preparing ourselves for the revival because if we're not ready with the word 
if we're not ready with peace, the gospel, then we're never going to make it because we're going to be so confused, so upset, so angry. We're going we're gonna to fall. We're going to slip because you, don't, you have everything else, but you don't have the shoes, the readiness. How can you go and just put the turkey in the oven without preparing it? You got to, there's some things that you find in the turkey that, man, I didn't know that was in there. I found a little bag in there. I said, where did this little bag come from? In a big old, what is that, the neck? At the neck? What is it? The still turkey neck? Do you eat that? You can eat that? The thing is, is everything takes preparation. Everything you need to prepare for. It's, I was talking to someone earlier. I said, life is like a, like a game of chess. Before you make a move, you really, really have to strategize. Come up with a plan. Because sometimes you make a move too fast and they say, man, I should have never done that before. You got to make a plan. That's why God is preparing us for 2024 to experience what I said earlier about the revival and the miracles and signs and wonder. First of all, we got to turn our whole hearts to him with fasting and with weeping. And then God said, man, you got to get your feet ready because if you can turn all that. But if you're not ready for what's about to come, you will fall. You will fall. You will fail. And I see a lot of people fall all the time. That just tells me that they were not ready. That just tells me that they had everything else, but they forgot their shoes. Have you ever gone to the store and you tell your, sh- your children, hey, put your shoes on? There's something about putting the shoes on that it, it gives a sign that you're ready to go somewhere. So when you put your shoes on and you tie them up, and tie them tight, you know that you're ready to go somewhere. And God said, man, I want you to put your shoes on. Before anything else, get your shoes ready because I'm taking you somewhere. But where I'm taking you, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come against you. But if you prepare yourself and get ready and listen to the word and know who I am, that it is written, hallelujah, that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. If you know who, who I am and if you know the word of God, you know that I can do anything through Christ who gives me strength. Now you're strong and now you can continue to walk with Jesus. And God wants us to continue to walk. The peace, of, the, the peace shoes have two purposes, defensive and offensive. Defense and offense. So in addition to standing our ground, shoes are also for not just standing, but for moving. God expects us to go on the offense and take our ground. We can't just stop. We got to move in the name of Jesus. And a lot of times... We're stopping because someone else is causing us to stop. But God's looking for people that no matter what that someone else or what that thing is or the ox or the land or the or the dead, let the dead bury the dead and I need to try my ox, you know all that scripture. Whatever is there, God said, man, if you want to follow that, follow that. I'm looking for people that let the dead bury the dead and follow me and go where I'm taking you to go. Because there's a lot of people that just stop. God says, ah, I know you want to stop, but keep on moving in the name of Jesus. I know you want to stop, but keep on moving in the name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you, finances will cause you to stop. Relationships will cause you to stop. Cancer, sickness will cause you to stop. But when you know who you are and you have the shoes of readiness you got this peace upon you the peace the gospel is upon you that you can walk knowing that God has called you he's sustaining you he's taking you places that you've never ever been before I love you and I know you're there but I just can't stay right there I gotta keep on moving in the name of Jesus I gotta some of you need to hear this you gotta start moving in the name of Jesus because when you don't move, God's not going to move. God said, I want you to move so I can move. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus. I'm almost done here. Remember, we're in the preparation season. This is for everyone. But it is sad that not everyone is going to be standing before the year is over. Many will slip. Many will fall. When you fall, man, you got to be careful. Because once you fall, the little demons are all over you. You're going down. And you're going to go down seven times more difficult is it going to get for your life. And to come back up, it's not easy. 
when, when, when that viper bites you, if you don't know the word, you won't know what to do with that viper and little by little that venom will kill you. But when you stand your ground and you know the word and you remember Paul, but even the viper that was so venom and fastened to his wrist, he did what? He shook it off into the fire. And some of you have been walking around with that snake in your hand for too long. Hallelujah. It's time for you to shake it off into the fire. Shake off that doubt. Shake off that fear. Shake off that depression. Shake off that alcohol. Shake off that pornography. Shake off that every single thing. That, shake. Come on, somebody just shake it off in the name of Jesus. Don't say you have nothing to shake. Everybody has something to shake off. Amen. If you say, I don't have nothing to shake, yeah, shake off that undenial. Amen. Shake it off. We all have something that we need to shake off. We have to shake it off every single day. Every day. Listen, I won't keep you here too long, but I want, I want you to, um, I want to ask you some questions. The gospel of peace, what that is, is the good news. So the gospel of peace is the good news about our peace with God. That's what it's all about. The gospel of truth is, is the good news about the peace with God through the blood of Jesus himself. We can be at peace knowing that God has paid the price, in other words. So when you have your shoes, a readiness, a preparation, the peace, you can walk around with all this peace upon you. I don't worry about nothing. I really don't. Because if I worried about everything, I'll be in the hospital right now with my daughter right next to her. <laughs> but I don't because I'm not a doctor and what am I going to do? But I'm there for support and I'm always there and I show up and I go visit her. But I, and what I'm trying to say is that I won't stop preaching the gospel because I know that as long as, come on, let's get the worship team. We're too, we're too, we're too, we're too quiet. You didn't have a bandana for nothing. She asked me, Pastor, can I put a bandana on? And I sent her a picture of the karate kid. And I said, I'll probably put mine on too. I know I didn't because I have elders and deacons in this house and I gotta you can get in trouble I'm not gonna get in trouble I, I'm, you're on your own that's your pastor right there that's my elder right here <laughs> no she said can I put the banana because I have some of the what is it called the group little worshipers if you don't know there's little teenagers that practice with her all the time and they and that's just something that she wears as like uh, what do you call it like um like a statement and, and it's pretty cool to see these young girls not to see the bandana but to see these young girls I see her videos and they're worshiping the Lord and praise God man because we got little worshipers coming up in the name of Jesus amen God doesn't look at the outside he looks at the inside amen but praise God um, so the, 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 the thing about this is when, when Jesus Christ paid the price for us we, we could walk around with this peace upon our lives, knowing that God loves us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for you and I. So when I'm preaching the gospel here, knowing that my daughter's in the hospital, it, it just, it, it gets the attention of the enemy and it gets the attention of God because God knows that he comes first before my wife, my children, and my family because I love him more than I love anyone else. And if I seek you the kingdom of God first, then everything else shall come to pass. The healing will come to pass. The strong relationship with my wife will come to pass. Everything else will fall into place when I put him first. And there's some people that don't get that. They don't put God first. They put everything else first and then God. That's why God is preparing each and every one of us, guys. He's preparing us for this revival that's going to take place. And I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It's only going to be a few that are going to experience the revival. I, I, I wish it was all of us. But not everybody is strong to turn your whole heart to God. Because there's 99% of us. 1% has to stay here. God said, no, I want all of you. When I have all of you, and then you go into some serious fasting and weeping and humble yourself. And I know that while I'm preaching the gospel here, while you're here, God is doing something over there. You, you hear all the time, there's a praying mama. 
there's a praying grandmother. Somebody prayed for you. And it's, a very, just, this, it's rare to find those praying grandmas or the praying mamas anymore. It's not like it used to be. But I know that I know that what God put in my heart last week and talk about we're going back old school, that we're going back, that we shouldn't even go back to begin with. We should have never left to begin with. We should have never walked out without our shoes to begin with. We should have been ready like Jesus yesterday, today, and forever. So we don't have to go back. But so sad that we do have to go back and get back to the basics and get ready for what's about to happen. Because God says, you can't handle what's out there. You can't handle what I got for you. But if you prepare yourself, hallelujah, if you prepare yourself with the shoes already, and stand and don't fall. Don't be wishy-washy, wishy-washy. Don't be in and out. Don't be lukewarm. I will vomit you out, the Lord said. I'm looking for a Philadelphia church, a strong, faithful church that will stand their ground, that when the devil comes, when the temptation comes, you will run like Joseph and say, get away from all that temptation. That's what God is looking for in the name of Jesus. Amen. So the good news of peace should make us ready you ask yourself ready for what I'm gonna give you a few things number one you can't go and experience revival the good news the shoes ready for temptation are you ready for that the temptation when it comes your way people ask me what do you do pastor when all these things come against you temptation and girls and things on TikTok so first of all I don't have a TikTok and next but sometimes they pop on your screen. Keep on scrolling. Don't scroll and then scroll back. Keep on scrolling. Delete, delete, delete. Don't put yourself in a position that you shouldn't be. I told you before, you might not like this, man, but I'm a man that I can give my phone to my wife at any second, at any minute, without worrying about what she's going to find or what she's going to see. Because my wife has all of me, not 99%, all of me. Because if he did it all for me, and I want to love my wife the way Christ loved me, I got to give her all of me. No one's going to have just a little of me. No, I belong to her and she belongs to me. That's my wife. That's your husband. That's your wife. I'm her husband. She's my wife. God is my God. I don't serve other gods. I serve one God. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I don't come here and talk about this and this. I'm here to talk about the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the name of Jesus here today. Praise God. I'm almost done. The enemy knows what you like. And if you're not, Joel chapter 2 is good. We've been, we, 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 we've been on those on that chapter, Joel chapter 1 and 2. If you, have, if you missed services, we talked about Joel 1 and Joel 2. This is where you can get on the same page. Joel didn't go through all that. And he it, it didn't come there for nothing. Because remember, the locusts ate everything. The devil took everything because of their disobedience. But then God says, if you want to get everything back, you got to do some things, Joel tells him. You got to turn your whole heart to the Lord. You got to fast. You got to weep. And in order for you to experience the revival, once we give our whole heart to God, it belongs to Him. When temptation comes, because we have our whole heart to Him, we draw near to God, He draws near to us. When temptation comes, you're strong because God is with you. And if God is with you, who could be against you? So when the, when the temptation comes, you got to be like Joseph and you got to run from it. But if you don't have your shoes ready, you'll be staying there and you're going to ah, ah, and you're going to be all cut up and you're going to fall and you're going to be injured and the devil will defeat you. Don't ever think that you're way up here that you won't fall, man. Look at David with Bathsheba on the, on, on the roof. When he should have been ready for battle, he stayed behind. And when you stay behind, that's when temptation comes. God says, I need you to go to the battle. David said, I'm going to stay here for one day. One day will tear you up. And he, and he saw the naked woman on the roof. If you haven't read that story, he brought her to his house, got her pregnant, and then all hell broke loose. 
It's a faithful man of God that fell. Just as God telling us, don't think you can withstand all that, that you're all this. No, you got to prepare yourself. The next thing is, is if you're ready for trials. So ready for temptation, ready for trials. This is, a, this is what I'm talking about. The good news of peace. Do you have peace? And if you have peace, that means that you have the shoes and you're ready for temptation and you're ready for trials because trials will come. And when trials come, are you easily knocked down? Are you easily moved? Or can you still stand? The next thing is, are you ready to teach? You can't teach something you haven't been learning yourself. Once you learn this, you can teach your children. On Sunday, I saw a lot of people here dedicating their babies. And sad to say, I might not see a lot of them back again. Matter of fact, I didn't know who some were. But we need to fix all that because we don't want people just to come and stand on the altar to dedicate a baby if you're not ded going to dedicate yourself first. Because if you're not going to dedicate yourself and go all in, how do you expect to be a godparent to someone and raise them up in the things of the Lord if you're not in the things of the Lord yourself? That's what I'm talking about. We come to a point where we just wichy-washy just to get them through. Nah. I'm tired of just getting people through. We get people through and then they're through. Fast. And I'm glad that we're a church that we're, we're getting to where we need to get to. We're preparing for what God is about to do. And God specifically told me these things through the word of God on how to prepare for the revival. And that's the whole church to turn yourself to, to God, ready to teach and ready to love. That's the last one. You can know all the scriptures and know and speak in tongues, but if you don't have love, you're just a bunch of hot air. God doesn't want men and women to be nothing but hot air. God wants you to love your enemies. God wants you to love those that hate you. He wants you to pray for those that don't pray for you. He wants you to just be Christ-like all the time at your job, at your families, wherever you're at. Tomorrow you're going to face a lot of people. You might see a tia or a tío that you don't like. You better smile and you better love them in the name of Jesus. You're going to remember this day and you're going to say, man, I forgot my chanclas. No, put on the shoes. Get ready. Put some spikes on your, wear your cleats if you have to wear your cleats. Some of you going to some deep families that you're going to be Move. You don't. You don't even want to go. You're dry. You're. You're dreading tomorrow, but put your cleats on for tomorrow. Amen. Stand strong, because temptation will come. You will go. You will go to some houses that are having Thanksgiving, and there's going to be alcohol all over the place. Doesn't mean that you get all holy and rebuke them. No. Show up. Be Christ-like. When they offer you a cigarette or a joint or a beer or something, just stand strong. Stand your ground. Have the peace of God upon you and just say, nah, it's all right. What, you think you're all holy? Nah, just, well, what is it? Okay, so if you want to ask him what is, let me tell you, Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for me. He came into my life and he set me free. I mean, you ask why. I'm telling you why. I rather, I used to get drunk with alcohol, but now I get drunk on the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You still want me to, okay, okay, okay. No, you still want me to keep on. Let me tell you why. Because I refuse to go back in the name of Jesus. I came too far to go back in the name of Jesus. I am where I'm at because of him. I stand my ground. I know who I am. I know who I serve. I will finish strong. I will not be moved. I will not be tossed back and forth like an ocean. I stand my ground. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about, church, when you can stand your ground like that. Because there's a lot of people that are pleasing people. You want to please people. There's a lot of people that are weak. They know you. They know that one little drink, that's all you want because that's what you like. And they know that you always fall. Come on, holidays, football games, whatever. But I, I dare you, man. I don't even have to dare you. I just encourage you. That the word of God, that if you are saved, you say no to the devil. The battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, the darkness of this earth. That means that she's not the devil, but God will use her so you can fall into temptation. God will use him so you can fall into temptation. Stand strong. Be faithful to God. If you can't be faithful to God, don't call yourself a Christian because a real, true, world 
class Christian will do what it has to do to stand strong and stand for the truth. We don't compromise, we don't sugarcoat, we don't do any of that, we stand the ground. If she really loves you, she'll wait for you. If he really loves you, he'll wait for you. If your family and your friends, they really love you, then they will respect your walk with Christ. And if they don't, you say, you know what? I'm not here to satisfy you or you. I'm here to satisfy the one that woke me up this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give it up for the Lord here today. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.